In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Go away from me, Lord. I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Today we read a Pauline passage where in the apostle is in one of his more, shall we say, peevish moods. As a rule, Paul's writings can be divided into two broad categories. When I think of you, I thank my God. Here, have a little advice. And in column two, we have, for the love of God, I'm asking you as a personal favor, please act like normal people for five minutes. Why are you like this? The entirety of 1 Corinthians is clearly in the second category. And today's passage is him redirecting, rededicating, restating the necessity of the resurrection to the gospel. At the end, though, we come to the refrain, I'm unworthy. In many call narratives, there's a spot where the new prophet sort of freaks out and doesn't want anything to do with the call. Paul, Isaiah, and Peter all proclaim their unworthiness when confronted with the all-holy, almighty God. These three, feeling the weight and consequences of human sin, respond to the overwhelming holiness and goodness of God, I am not worthy. It's an honest response. However, God calls those who are called. We aren't worthy by our own insights and merits and work, but God, in the act of calling us, says that we're worthy, makes us worthy. This is shown by God sending the angel to touch Isaiah's lips with the burning coal. There is no excuse. God has called us. In Paul's case, he is called despite his role as a persecutor of the church. He is acutely aware of this, and that is why he calls himself both least and last. As John Chrysostom would put it, he was forgiven for having persecuted the church, but there was a shame in it that he never forgot. Peter was willing to do what Jesus said, to put out into the deep water and to cast his nets. It was another thing entirely when they caught fish, and then they kept catching fish, and the fish were so heavy that they couldn't pull the net in, and they had to call in another boat. The boats nearly sink. And it was understandable that Peter responds, Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not ready for this. I'm not worthy of this. Please just go away. Poor, bumbling Peter has his moment of clarity, and yet it's jo his job remains pulling the net. And in that net is symbolically all of us who follow, including Paul, including me, and including More than that, we have the task of we now have the task of pulling that net too, and the miraculous catch continues. Even when we are individually unable to see our role in it. Even though we are individuals of unclean lips, and we definitely live among a people of unclean lips, we continue to be called. We may feel unworthy because we are aware of our own limitations and failures. However, there are three great truths which, seem, which we seem incapable of actually following through on. One, God qualifies the called, not the other way around. Two, we are called to be faithful to the call in which we are, we, our individual and collective calls. 
even if we may not always look to be successful, or it seems to be something absolutely bizarre, like pull, you know, drop your nets here. And three, it is God working in us, not our own efforts that make us want to, that, that we need to concentrate on. We may be doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing, and we don't see the end result. Peter and James and John and all the other people on the Lake of Gennesaret, which is also called the Sea of Galilee or sometimes the Lake of Herod, it, it, um, they don't see us now. We don't see what's going to be next week, let alone in a hundred to a thousand years. Our job is to just keep pulling the net. Pulling the net. Paul, that's what Paul means when he writes, it was not I, but the grace of God within me. We may not like what we've got to say. Isaiah certainly doesn't. How long am I going to have to say this? We may not understand what we're doing. Peter certainly doesn't. We may not always like our audience. God knows Paul didn't. But we are called to be faithful to our own call and not to the vagaries of success. Prayer, how do we discover our callings? Prayer and careful discernment. What does that look like? Uh, no, let's talk. Seriously, everyone is different and everyone has heard or rather experienced the call of God differently. When I was in seminary, we were talking about the, the calling of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah, what? No, Samuel, Samuel, what? Huh? What? And somebody said, well, you hear a voice inside your head. You don't hear a vo uh, an auditory voice. And our professor said, oh, really? Everybody hears a voice inside their head. I, for one, have never heard God's voice inside my own head too many other things going on but I have experienced the call and each of us experiences that call differently and there is no right or wrong way to experience that call and so let's talk and let us never forget the words of Paul in Ephesians to God whose power now at work in us can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Be glory in his church and in Christ Jesus. Through all generations, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.